Welcome to the Christ in Us devotional. Today's devotional is titled, The Divine Council. God has taken His place in the Divine Council. In the midst of the gods, He holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Selah, give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, You are gods, sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, like men you shall die and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations. Psalms chapter 82 verses 1 through 8, English Standard Version. The Heavenly Father has chosen to have a council from which He runs His kingdom, both the heavenly kingdom and the earthly kingdom. The Heavenly Father doesn't need counsel from anyone, for He is all-knowing, yet this is how He chooses to run His kingdom. Without this understanding, we can't come to the complete revelation of the heavenly and high calling of God in the Lord Jesus and the adoption, which is connected to the firstborn inheritance of Christ. In Psalms chapter 82, we see God taking His place amongst other lesser gods, with a small g, and judging them for not judging the nations righteously. God judges these sons of God because of their rebellion and wickedness, and passes the judgment that they will die like men. In Psalms chapter 89, verses 5 through 7, we see this council or assembly of the holy ones in the sky. These heavenly beings are divine sons of God, not humans, as some erroneously try to make them. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord, a God greatly to be feared in the council of the holy ones, and awesome above all who are around him? English Standard Version in Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, we're told that after the flood, that the nations came together to build the Tower of Babel, which resulted in the nations being separated and scattered over the face of the earth, along with their languages being confounded. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech, and it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down, and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore its name is called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 8 through 9, we see the nation's rebellion at the Tower of Babel, which caused the nations to be placed under these divine sons of God. At that time, God divided up the nations and put them under the lesser God's rule, with the intent that they would teach the nations the ways of God. Instead, they rebelled and caused the nations to sin more against God. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when He divided mankind, He fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God. But the Lord's portion is His people, Jacob, His allotted heritage, English Standard Version. These divine sons of God are also known as the morning stars, 
And in Job chapter 38 verses 4 through 7, we see that they were there when God created the foundations of the earth and rejoiced and shouted for joy. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? In Job chapter 1 verse 6, we see these divine sons of God come before God and present themselves, and this scripture gives us insight into this divine counsel. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And Job chapter 2 verse 1 says, Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Before the nations were put under these divine sons of God at the Tower of Babel, in Genesis chapter 6 verse 4, there were other divine sons of God, before the flood, came down and married daughters of men, and their offspring were the giants, or Nephilim. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. In the book of Enoch, we are told that two hundred of the divine sons of God left their proper domain, came to earth, and sinned with the women from earth. It is essential to see the difference between the divine sons of God who rebelled here in Genesis chapter 6 and those who inherited the nations. The books of 2 Peter and Jude speak about these sons of God who left their proper domain and are now in chains awaiting their judgment on the day of judgment. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 4 says, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to Tartarus, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved for judgment. And Jude chapter 1 verse 6 says, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As a result of the nations rebelling against God and building the Tower of Babel, their language was confused and they were separated into seventy nations and placed under the rule of the divine sons of God. After this Tower of Babel incident, God chose Abram and built from him a nation that he would use to bring the nations back under him. The nation that will come from Abram is a big part of God's plan of the ages, for a remnant out of the children of Israel has a significant part in bringing about the restoration of all things. Through the seed of Abraham, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Even though God disinherited the nations for a time, in the coming ages, they will all be restored and become the inheritance of Christ. The divine sons of God who were judged in Psalms chapter 82 will be judged on the day of judgment and replaced with a chosen remnant from this present evil age who are saved by the Lord Jesus and sanctified by Him. The Lord Jesus came to not only redeem the nations by His work on the cross, but through the adoption will replace the rebellious divine sons of God with those called out of this world by the Lord Jesus. He is transforming His followers into His image and will exalt them to the throne as joint heirs with Himself. Those who attain to the first resurrection are the overcomers who will replace the rebellious divine sons of God and take their place in the divine council. The overcomers will be made like the Lord Jesus after the first resurrection. The new creation will be completed, and they will become divine sons of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for calling me out of this fallen world and calling me to the high calling in Christ. May you transform me into the image of Christ so that I may be joint heirs with him. Please continually remind me each day that you have appointed me in Christ to the firstborn inheritance with the Lord Jesus and will one day sit with him in the divine council. Amen. 
If you have listened to this devotional but have never repented and asked the Lord to come into your life and would like to do so now, pray this. Heavenly Father, I believe the Lord Jesus died and was raised from the dead according to the Scriptures. I come to you asking for you to forgive me and wash me of all my sins. Please cleanse me from all things that are offensive to you. Please do a work in me according to your will so that I may be with you forever when I die. Teach me your ways and the things that please you. Amen. If you have prayed this, please let us know in the comments. I encourage you to ask the Heavenly Father to guide you to a church where you can be baptized in water and can be taught and grow in the Lord. Seek the Lord Jesus and ask Him to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. God bless you.